DICOM module for the Captus 4000E. You've purchased the 4000E, it has Cap DICOM on it, they provided you a disc that says Cap DICOM on it, and it's going to have the license code on that disc. First thing you want to do is go to Setup. You want to then go to Module License. You would take the license code that's provided on that CD. You would put that information here, and it would come out and say Cap DICOM, and then you would say Done. That means that the Cap DICOM module is now active on the system. Then you would go to DICOM, and you would go to Settings. Now then, this is blank, and you will have to fill it in. So you'll have to get an AE title from the PAX Administrator. Once he provides you that AE title, fill that in. Fill in the remaining part of this form, and then say Save. And that information then tells the uh, DICOM server and the work list provider who you are. So then you want to add the work list provider, so you click on that. I've already done that, but we'll edit here. <clears throat> it'll come up and it'll say name. In my case, I call it work list. And then the AE title is provided by the PAX administrator, the host name, which will be the IP address, and the port that it's found on. And then I usually select active. This part here will all be automatically filled in. So you want to echo. You will echo. It will then communicate with the work list provider and it'll come back and tell you it's successful. If it's successful, you know that there is communication established and we've got successful echo. You would save that and then you want to do the same for the DICOM. And you'd say add storage provider and then DICOM brings up this uh, page. You would fill out the name. In my case, I call it DICOM storage. The AE title, whatever AE title is provided to you by the PAX administrator, the IP address, and the port no number. I usually say active here, and this information is filled in automatically. You would echo, and we're echoing to see if the DICOM storage will communicate with the Captus 4000E. If it communicates, then we will say save down here, and it communicated. And then we're ready to proceed with our thyroid uptakes. We've got all the information in, so we would say done. So to, to do the thyroid uptakes, we would say thyroid uptake, brings this up. We want to then go to a DICOM work list. It pulls this up. If there's DICOM data on it, we would clear all of that data by going to clear all and selecting OK. Then we would query the work list provider. And it would query it by the day's date and the modality nuclear medicine. We would query it. It's going to come back to us and say these are the patients that are currently on the work list that can be uh, accessed today. So then we would go in and we would select a uh, patient. In this case, we will select uh, Jane Wyman. We will say import that patient. You've got to highlight it and put a check mark. Import the patient. It goes into the patient directory. So now then we've got it there. We want to select Jane Wyman. So once we've selected uh, the patient, it's going to come back and say, there's additional information needed for this patient that you've just pulled over. So you say, yes, we want to update it. So you have to select a protocol. In this case, we'll say I-123 uptake. Then we have to, uh, after we've selected that, we will have to fill in with the lot number from the uh, uh, dose. The activity, in this case, we'll say 300 microcaries as of 12 noon uh, today. So we'll change this time and put in 1,200. And then we'll put in the name of the person performing this. In this case, I'm going to put test in there. Review your probe distance and your counting time here. And once that's done, you can say done. Okay, so now then, all data has been entered. So we're ready to count the patient dose. When we're ready to count the patient dose, this screen comes up. It tells you this is the patient you want to do, and you're going to say yes to that. And it says, do you want to use a previous room background? Maybe it'll tell you this if it has one. If not, it was not. Just say no. You want to count the background. So you remove all the sources from the area, and you start counting the background. When you're counting this background, this should be relatively flat in all. It's a spectrum of any isotopes that the machine's picking up. Your auto scaler here is at 100. It should remain at 100 when you're counting room background. This will count for 60 seconds. 
When the one minute is completed, you'll get a value here. It should be a fairly repeatable value. The auto scatter is at 100. You can accept it. Just review your spectrum and accept it. Say yes. And then he'll ask you about doing your capsule count. In this case, it says use previous capsule uh, date and count. I'm going to say no to it. So what we want to do now is we want to put the capsule into the phantom. We want to properly position it in the phantom so that the capsule is in that phantom with it uh, closest to the uh, surface of the phantom. And we want to make sure that the lines on top line up and that the capsule, uh, the distance marker is not obstructing the view of the capsule from the detector surface. So we're ready to measure the capsule. We say OK. It'll begin the capsule count. And as it does this count, you'll see the spectrum come up. And it'll count this uh, capsule for one minute. Once the capsule count has completed, you'll get a readout for the total number of counts and you have the opportunity to accept the count so just make sure you check the spectrum and it should be a reproducible count from day one, day two, day three if you're counting pretty much the same activity. Once you've done that you can say exit. Now then you uh, have the opportunity to administer the dose. So in this case we're going to say administer dose and we select administer now and it'll enter in the current date and the current time and if that's an acceptable one you can do that. In this case we're going to say uh, we're actually administering this at uh, 1320. So I would uh, backspace and put in 20 1320 and say done. So now the, in, the information's been entered in there, the capsule uh, a count has occurred, the doses have been administered, and the activity has been calculated for the uh, current time. So I can now uh, count the selected patients. So in 24 hours, we will uh, count to Ms. Wyman, and the uptake will be sent into the DICOM server. So the 24 hours have elapsed. Uh, Jane Wyman's back, so we select thyroid uptake. We go ahead and select Jane Wyman. Then we're ready to count that selected patient. We'd say start procedure. It's going to ask you if this is whom you want to count. And then you would say yes to that. And it says measure the patient's background. So we're going to measure the patient's background at 25 centimeters. So now we're measuring the patient's background at 25 centimeters. So we say OK to that. We begin the count. And this is the patient's background. <clears throat> And when you're pay counting the patient's background, you would expect to see some counts if you're counting over the thigh in an area similar in dimensions to the uh, patient's neck. And this will count for one full minute. Once the patient's background's been counted, you can review the uh, spectrum and then you can accept that measurement. Now you're asked to measure the neck at 25 centimeters. So we'll begin the neck count by just saying OK after we've uh, positioned the patient in front of the uh, probe with the proper distance and then the instrument will count for one minute. Once the neck count is completed then you can review the spectrum and you can accept the measurement. Once you've accepted the measurement it will then provide you an uptake at the uh, 24 hour period there. So once you've got that information then you can exit out of the program here. Then you will be able to go down and say I want to create a report, a DICOM report. So you would say report. It brings up the information here on Ms. Wyman. Tells you what the original count was, what the count was done at 24 hours, what time it was done. And because we're doing it looking at 15 to 35 for the normal value, the uptake showing is 40%. It's outside of the normal value there. So we want to create a DICOM report. So we select DICOM report. 
It brings up the DICOM report with all of the necessary information. If any information is missing here, it'll have to be put in. And we can look at page one, and we can look at page two, which shows you a graphic display of, uh, of the information. So now that you have this information, you can now export it over to the DICOM server. So you would say export. And the report now will go to the DICOM server. And when it finishes that uh, uh, report, it will come back and say it was successfully exported to the DICOM uh, server there. So you can just say OK on it. And then you can exit back out. And then you can exit back out to the main screen. And that's the uh, uh, DICOM uh, module and what it allows you to do with regards to thyroid uptake patients. You should then go to your DICOM uh, reviewing station. You should be able to pull up the uh, report on Jane Wyman and you can look at uh, report one and then we will also look at report two. Report two shows the graphic display of the uh, DICOM image. Then this concludes the uh, module regarding the CAP DICOM setup, utilization, and display.